Hi, I'm Toby from AWS and welcome to This Is My Architecture from reInvent. I'm joined today by Adam from ClearData. Hi Adam. Hi Toby. Welcome to reInvent. Thank you sir. Great. Uh, tell me a bit about ClearData. ClearData is an Amazon partner today that helps folks in the healthcare and life sciences space adopt Amazon by addressing some of the security and compliance controls that they need to have in place to be able to store sensitive data on top of the Amazon cloud. Thank you. Um, and what's the solution we're going to talk about today? So today we're going to be talking about an event processing solution that enables us to look at all the CloudWatch events that occur within a customer's workload account and respond to them in real time if we need to, to add that security and compliance layer. Okay. So on the board here, it looks like what we've got is a, an ETL pipeline. Can you talk us through um, you know, the components here and what, what we're doing? Absolutely. So we start off with the CloudWatch events that occur in the workload account that we were describing before. This dotted line represents account separation as we move into a management account controlled by clear data. Right. Um, so, so just to clarify then, so anything on this side will be the customer's account, and over here is your clear data management account. You got it. Great. Um, we initially come into a Lambda, and this Lambda's job is only really quickly to persist into Kinesis streams. So we want to get into Kinesis as quickly as we can. That way we can fan out in our response. As we go through Kinesis Streams on the other side, we have what we call a router lambda. The router lambda enables us to classify the event. So we'll go through and look at the event type, uh, other metadata that's contained in the event, to be able to determine what other systems need to be made aware of this event effectively to respond to it within our infrastructure. So, so you've got some of your business logic in here, some of your core business logic. What type of event is this? How do we respond? Exactly, you got okay, it. Right. Um, so as we move through, that response could take a number of forms, and we may trigger a number of things based on it. Um, in some cases, we may trigger an AWS Lambda to respond to uh, an event that comes through. An example of this would be if you spin up a new instance and we need to schedule backups and vulnerability scanning. That can be done through this Lambda. Um, for longer running tasks, we actually feed into an ECS container. So we move across, and you can think of this as a job that the timeout for Lambda really wouldn't make this a good use case for things like archiving log data or compressing files. Um, so that can be done in the ECS container in sort of a batch mode task. Um, we also have some of our infrastructure that will trigger a step function. So this might be, for instance, us calling out to a third-party managed service. Um, an example in our infrastructure would be we use a host-based IDS agent. Mm -hmm. So we may need to register that agent with the central SaaS service, and that may suffer internet transient failures. So we need to be able to retry that periodically, and step functions gives us that framework to call out and then deal with if we need to retry that Lambda multiple times before we get success. Yeah, because I know with, with, with workflows, uh, you know, you need to make it robust and have kind of error handling and stuff. So step functions gives you some of that resilience and, and retry and, and, and that sort of stuff. Exactly. Cool. Um, the last thing we do out of this router Lambda is we actually archive off to Kinesis Firehose. So Kinesis Firehose allows us to route those events both into Elasticsearch and into S3. In the Elasticsearch world, we keep the last few months of data to draw dashboarding across from an operational perspective to understand what's going on in the customer accounts. Um, we use S3 for long-term storage, so you can assume we write data out there and then we'll archive it off to Glacier eventually using lifecycle policies. Mm -hmm. Oh, you've got a, a really a, a great complement of different AWS services for your solutions here. Um, just one point there, you mentioned that you've got a uh, Elasticsearch cluster there, presumably you've got Kibana dashboards. Is that where your own teams are monitoring those events for Absolutely. Any, any exceptions? Absolutely, you got mm -hmm. it. So we have a uh, number of things that we can build dashboards for there. We look at the volume of STS traffic into accounts. Um, we look at everything from how often customers are spinning up instances to um, using it forensically. If there's any sort of issue in the workload account, we can use that to be a source of truth to go back through all the events that have occurred and really piece together what happened in that workload environment end to end. Great. So c can you talk us through maybe a specific example of a, a customer event uh, and, and walk us through the system? Sure, Toby. So we have uh, on the customer workload side, we'll say, for instance, a security group change being made. So we'll see a CloudWatch event generated for that security group change. It will come through our pipeline and eventually be routed back to a Lambda on this side. That Lambda can evaluate that organization's network security policy and say, okay, you've expressed to us as an organization you never want to have a machine sitting in a public subnet that has port 22 open. Um, if that change was made here and we see that coming through the pipeline, we can go back and interrogate that security group and actually roll that change back if we need to. So using STS, the Lambda here can actually call back into the customer's account to reconfigure that security group so it's back within your organizational policy. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, thanks, Adam, for sharing today. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Toby. Thank you. And thanks, everyone, for watching. This is my architecture.